it again. Welcome back to Headlight Headlines. I'm your host Clayton and I'm super excited to get into the news today. I've been having some microphone issues that's why we got the old handy dandy headset on today. Um, so if the mic sounds different that's why. Hopefully we get that sorted out before the next episode but we're just gonna keep on going uh, making it work. So before we get started make sure to check us out on Twitter at HLightHLines, where we'll post an update right before a new episode goes live every time. Also check us out on YouTube on our channel, Headlight Headlines, where you can always find a video version of this podcast. And we're going to get things started today with the Jeep Avenger. We have done a little bit of discussion on this vehicle before when the concept was unveiled, but now we get to finally see the production-ready version. Um of Jeep's first EV. So it's not coming to the United States, but I still think it's worth looking at because it is Jeep's first EV that they're going to produce. Um, So it is a front-wheel drive vehicle that is smaller than the Jeep Renegade that we currently have, which means it's pretty small. Um, Even though it's front-wheel drive, it has select terrain where you can have different terrain modes for like mud, sand, snow, stuff like that. It also has hill descent control, so those kind of help in that sense. But they're saying it gets up to 249 miles on a charge, and it has 10 or 100 kilowatt hour fast charging, which means it can charge from 20 to 80 percent in I believe 24 minutes, which is pretty impressive for a car like this, especially a first EV for a company. Um, so it's being built on the same Polish plant as the Fiat 500, which means I think it's based off that same chassis, because I know Jeep has some models, like the Renegade is based off the Fiat chassis. So I think that's what it's meaning. They're saying it puts out 156 horsepower, which is not terrible, 192 pound-feet of torque on a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, and they're showing it here in this interesting yellow gold kind of color but it's got two tone like it's got a black roof which is cool Um, they're saying a full charge can take about five and a half hours which is kind of a long time but not too bad it means you can charge it overnight Um, it has some respectable off-road elements even though it's not really a crazy off-road it doesn't have four-wheel drive but it has a 32 degree approach angle and a 20 degree breakover and departure angles. It has decent gla- ground clearance at almost 8 inches. Um, so you could do some off roading with this vehicle, obviously not a ton. Um, if you order before November 30th, you can get the first edition, which I believe is this yellow one that we're looking at here. Um, it comes with a 10.25 inch infotainment screen and a digital cluster. And I think it's pretty cool. They're saying in some markets, like Italy and Spain, they're going to have a hybrid version, which has a turbocharged gas engine, which I want to hear more about that, because I'm interested to see what kind of engine would be in there, and what kind of power figures it would put out, because I would think it would be more than what this electric one is offering, but who knows. Um, Also pictured here in this white with blue accents, we have the Avenger 4xE concept, which we saw back before when we saw the other concepts. Um means they have this 4x4 model somewhere but it's not production ready yet so maybe in the future we'll get that but until then it's a pretty nice looking car I think coming out here from Jeep especially as their first step into the electric vehicle market next up we have a Honda Civic update so the Honda Civic for the 2023 model year is dropping their base LX trim um, which means now the base trim is the Sport, which costs a bit more than that LX trim used to. So the Sport starts at twenty-five seven forty-five, which is over two thousand dollars more than last year's LX trim. Uh, they're saying in general trim levels are up by five hundred to seven hundred dollars, but obviously this jump between trims is what gets that high figure that we just talked about. So. You do get 18 inch wheels, you do get proximity key entry and paddle shifters, but it has a 158 horsepower 2.0 liter four cylinder, which kind of sucks because every other version has the 
1.5 liter turbo, which is more powerful. So I don't see why they're just offering this engine on one trim. Kind of goofy to me. But you can still get a six-speed manual on the hatchback uh, for a no-cost option. So I think the Civic will still remain super popular. I think it's a great-looking vehicle. This thing looks amazing. It has a great interior. It's definitely worth the money, but it kind of sucks that you got to pay a little more now. But kind of got to pay a little more for everything. So I don't know what you're expecting. Next up, we got an update from BMW. They're saying that the M models will continue to receive manual transmissions until 2030. And this is coming from the head of BMW's M division, uh, which I think is pretty surprising. 2030 is eight years away, and I doubt many cars will have a manual then. So the M2 we just got pictured here, the M3 and M4 we got new versions of last year. So knowing that all of these and the rest of the M cars will keep a manual until 2030, it's pretty good news, I think. Uh, I'm interested to see what other cars at that time will have a manual, if any, because I think it'll be quite limited. But this manual from BMW is really nice right now. Don't know why it's not in the Z4, but anyway, at least it'll be in the M cars. So yeah. Speaking of manual transmissions, we got another update from uh, Mini, which we don't normally talk about very often. But Mini is bringing back the manual for its two-door hardtop. Um, earlier this year, they announced that they were going rid of. Sorry, oh my gosh! Earlier this year, they announced they were getting rid of the manual back in May because of supply, supply chain issues but now they're saying they're bringing it back for the 2023 model year and this is on the Cooper, Cooper S and John Cooper Works versions of the two-door hardtop and I think it's great to see this means that they really want to have it that because if they didn't they would just have got rid of it and never never batted an eye and they would have kept it away so they're also bringing two new colors Melting Silver 3, interesting name, and Nanook White, also an interesting name. Uh, but it's good to see that they actually want to keep this and that they are bringing it back. I think that shows a lot about Mini. And I mean, they're under the same umbrella as BMW, so maybe it's not a coincidence that we're seeing both of these stories on the same day. And then lastly, we have a interesting EV charging story. We had one of these yesterday. Also, yesterday we talked about 10 minute EV charging, but today we're one up in it. We're going with 5 minute EV charging, which is very, very interesting. Obviously, like we talked about yesterday, keeping batteries cool is the key to faster charging, and that's really difficult to do. Um, keep the temperature down. So, this new version that we're hearing about yesterday we heard about one I believe it was from uh, it's from a university or something I can't remember to be honest um, but this one's coming from NASA which I think is pretty crazy um, obviously NASA deals with space deals with a lot of temperature change things like that and they're saying for a vehicle to be charged in five minutes it takes 1400 amperes which the fastest chargers now max out at 520 so that's almost three times as much as the fast fastest fast chargers we have now and a lot of heat is going to come with that but NASA thinks they have the knowledge to possibly create this using flow boiling and condensation experiments in the International Space Station they might be able to solve this so obviously with these big temperatures, it's hard because of the heat transfer that's occurring. But they, it's hard to explain, and I don't want to get into it a lot and confuse you all, but they're saying that they have the ability to deliver 
2,400 amps, which is insane. That's a thousand more amps than they thought they needed for this goal. So, if they can implement this into any sort of charging mechanism that the public can use, that would be insane, and that would be so helpful. So, really cool to see NASA coming in to help the automotive world. Um, we'll see if we can get this five minutes. That'd be awesome. It ups one ups that ten minutes by a lot. So, we'll see. But that being said, that's all we got for today. Sorry if this video seemed a bit rush or podcast seemed a bit rushed today. We were having issues with the microphone. So hopefully we can get that sorted out for tomorrow. If not, you'll see me back here wearing this headset. Uh, but yeah, follow us on Twitter at HLightHLines and subscribe on YouTube to our channel, Headlight Headlines. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Stay safe out there.